going to share something with y'all. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife for saying completely different ball game. I'll walk away from here, and this has been like a therapy session. This is Joe Pugh for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Delighted to be joined here at the Park Plaza Leeds. Two days before her big world title fight, it's Shannon O'Connell. How are you, Shannon? I'm great. Happy to be here. Excellent. First of all, before we start, just speaking off camera, first time in the UK. You've picked a cold time for it in December. It's Leeds. How have you found it so far? Yeah, it's been cold. It's, it's been great. It's definitely cold, and I definitely didn't pick the date, so I probably would have preferred to come here in summer. Yeah, you say you didn't pick the date. Obviously, at the press conference, you hinted that she's been stalling this fight, obviously, Ebony Bridges. From your point of view, how has she been stalling this, and has this been a long time coming, in your opinion? Um, yeah, look, we were um, chasing the fight before she even won it. We were chasing the mandatory spot, so we were we were going to get the winner of, of when she won the belt. Um, but yeah, they, in the way of stalling it, they um, they applied for exemptions to fight someone else over me um, more than once. Um, then, like, it obviously went to purse bid, and then they were they were given ninety days to stage the show, and and it's day eighty seven when we, when we fight. So they couldn't have taken it any further. Yeah, so it's a bit of a strange one because you're both Australian, you're complete opposite side of the world, but yet this fight happens in Leeds. And I think that's testament to Ebony. She's kind of based herself over here and has got herself a big following. In your opinion, would you have rather done it in your home nation or are you happy to come over here? Yeah, look, I, I, obviously I would have rather have done it in Australia, um, but I mean, I'm more than happy to be here as well. I'm just happy that the fight's actually on now. Talk to me about Ebony then. We'll talk about the kind of the beef in a minute. But as a fighter, do you respect her? Do you think she's a skilled athlete? Um, I respect anyone that gets in the ring and fights. Um, but I, I mean, in the way of skill, like she's she's more of a fighter. Um, so I guess it's, it's that's sort of hard to say. She didn't really have an amateur background where you know you need more of the skill. And um, but no, as a as a fighter, I, 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 there's no one that steps through those ropes that I don't respect in that way. And have you studied her? Because within the last two fights, she's teamed up with Mark Tibbs, who's obviously a really respected trainer from the UK. And since then, she's improved her boxing skills. She'll say that. So are you expecting a better Ebony Bridges than we've seen in the past? Um, yeah, uh, she has improved. She's definitely improved a lot since her, her fight with Shannon Courtney. Um, but, I, you know, th to be honest... When you're still reasonably a novice, which she is, um, you can work on things in the, in the gym every day, day in, day out. And, and it doesn't mean you've got that experience to be able to put it straight into a fight, especially when you're under pressure. So who knows what she's going to bring? Um, you know, she's got the same style. So obviously they've, they've been working on, on that style. Like she's not going to, they're, they're not going to change the boxer she is. So um, yeah, um, I'll, I'll be ready for whatever they bring. Ebony Bridges is a controversial figure over here. I just want to know, from your perspective, how is she viewed in Australia? Um, she's not overly respected much in Australia. Just, you know, the, the way she goes about things, the way she holds herself, the way she talks. Uh, you know, she's... she's uh, yeah, no, she's, she's not... Yeah, she, she, it is what it is. I mean, it, really, it all speaks for itself. Is that just down to the fact that she obviously comes out in the lingerie and kind of plays that to her own advantage? She'll say it herself that's her own unique selling point. Yeah, I mean, I guess she started out that way. That was, you know, what sort of first got people going, oh, like, what is she doing? But then, you know, when you hear her talk in interviews and, and things like that, it sort of backs up the, the disrespect, the disrespectful person that she is, I guess. Do you feel like she's personally disrespected you at any point in this build-up? Oh, for sure. I mean, she said I've meant. She said I'm jealous of her. Um, I'm mentally weak. She's said she's really. She's crossed the line a few times. Um, where it's not just you know fight a beef, um, but yeah, she she definitely has. I, I don't know if she sees it that way, but I definitely see it that way. I think I saw in a something Matchroom posted about something to do with your family. Is that right? Yeah. So. Um, I've gotten my story out there. Like my, both my parents are dead. Um, my dad died when I was little. My mum was a drug addict. 
Um, I've gotten my story out there to try and help people, um, you know, people, other people that have had struggles and, um, you know, her and some of her fans have put me down saying that, you know, I'm looking for sympathy and poor me and, and you know, that's not, it's absolutely not what I'm about. Um, I'm definitely not a poor me kind of a person. So um, I think that just them talking about that and, and my mental health, like that, that's, they're things that you just don't bring up. 100%. And for you going into this, does that mean it's just not a world title fight for you? It's a personal grudge match or is it strictly business? I'm strictly business all the time. Um, you know, we don't like each other outside the ring. I don't think that, that one, I know that that's not going to change after the fight, regardless of the outcome. But, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a professional and, and when it comes time to fight, I'm, I'm here to fight. After the fight, if she apologises for those comments, will you kind of accept that and both move on potentially? She ain't going to apologise. There's not a chance. We don't like each other and that's not going to change. I don't like her. I'm, I'm not going to change my mind about her. I want to go into your comments then about the skank, the stripper. It's kind of been the big talking point of the whole fight. Even Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn don't mention quotes at press conference much, so you know you must be playing the right buttons if that thing. So what exactly was that? Because I think a lot of people have seen the quote clipped out, but they don't actually know the context behind it. Uh, to be honest, I don't even remember how far that went back. I would have just been a comment that I made. It probably didn't, even when I made it, didn't realise how much it was going to get used but I mean I'll, I'll back what I say like um, it is what it is Excellent and I just want to pick up on one more comment you said today at the press conference you said you have morals so what did you mean by that? Well I guess that's the same as you know the, the whole way in thing and like you know I've got, I've got three children I, the last thing I would want is for my 16 year old son to be going to school and everyone passing around photos of me looking like she does on the scales or, or my 15 year old daughter just pretty much what she's doing is teaching young girls get your clothes off and you can get what you want in life um, I'm not about that um, I definitely don't want my daughter looking up to someone like that so that's where I sort of go with morals and and for me it's it's morals over money any day I, I she does what she does to to build her name to to get money I'd rather not have the money than to to put myself in her position back to the boxing then on Saturday night, you'll be hoping to announce yourself to a completely different audience. The UK fan base is very big. It's going to be an electric atmosphere here in Leeds. What can they expect from you, style-wise, for people who haven't seen you in the ring before? It's going to be an entertaining fight. Like no, Neither of us really take a backward step. Um, I'm, I'm probably more of an aggressive counterfighter, so you know she's going to walk straight into my punches. Um, it's going to be exciting, regardless of the outcome, how it ends, which way it goes, it's going to be exciting until it ends. It's been a bit confusing for everyone kind of around fight week. Which Shannon are we talking about? Shannon Courtney, Shannon O'Connell. Shannon Courtney, someone who's in your weight division. Have you seen her? Have you watched the fight between Ebony Bridges? That was an excellent tear-up. Uh, not much boxing involved in that, but what's your opinions on Shannon Courtney? Um, yeah, I met her just, I think, yesterday at the uh, media workout. She seems like a really nice girl. So, um, you know, obviously, we, I, I didn't, I wasn't really watching or, or didn't, I, I watched their fight, but I didn't see the build up. I just remember thinking, like, it was embarrassing. Um, but yeah, I mean, she seems like a really nice girl. Well, you both got something in common. You're both not the biggest fan of Ebony Bridges. No, well, yeah, she's obviously got morals too then. <laughs> A big fight um, that last week took place in your division was Nina Hughes versus Jamie Mitchell. Surely in the back of your mind, you've got to be looking at that. Obviously, main focus on Saturday night, but that'd be a massive, massive uh, unification fight as Nina's just signed with Matchroom this week. Oh, yes, yeah. See, I mean, I didn't even know that. Um, Nina Hughes was... I didn't know who she was until she beat Jamie Mitchell. Um, I, 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 we were always talking about Jamie Mitchell, so now I guess... Because it's only sort of fresh, we haven't really spoken about it because we've got this in front of us, but I'm sure we'll talk about that after the fight. Would you come back to the UK if uh, the fans embrace you next year, potentially for a unification fight, if you do get the business done on Saturday? Yeah, absolutely. Just please bring me back in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd say bring back in the summer, but there's no guarantee that it could be that warm even in July, August. Yeah, Eddie's probably already planning that for, for November, December next year, just, just, just to upset me. <laughs> Last couple then. What's your prediction for Saturday night? What happens when you finally get in the ring with Ebony Bridges? Um, look, I think a clear, either a clear points win or a late stoppage. And last one, have you got 
one final message one day before the weigh-in to send to Ebony Bridges? Not really. It, all the talk's done. I just can't wait to get in there. Shannon, thank you very much for being into IFL TV. Best of luck Saturday night and hopefully speak to you after the fight's done. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Thanks very much. I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it and this has been like a therapy session.